A few years ago, I was heading to Yellowstone for a meeting. I had worked there. It was my first National Park job in a park from 1979 to 1984. I'd flown into Bozeman, Montana, rented a car, and was driving through the Paradise Valley into the park. As the territory got more familiar, I couldn't believe the, over, the incredible connection I felt to that place. I literally pulled the car over to the side of the road and I called my wife, who unfortunately wasn't with me, and just told her, I've come home. Whether a child on a family trip or a pretty matter-of-fact guy returning to a place he worked years earlier, these places move you, offering each of us something different. For some, parks and their care became a vocation. For others, parks are the places of solitude, or places where we learn or come back to again and again to renew relationships to nature, to family, and friends. For others, parks are the places we volunteer and support with our works, our words, and our checkbooks. And for others, parks just might be a place where we start an exercise program and a path to healthy living. This is a continuum of relevance that people can have with parks. There is no right or wrong place on that continuum, but it's our job to invite all of our fellow citizens to have that threshold experience that gets them on the continuum. Issuing that invitation and following through on it is a big part of how the National Park Service is preparing for the celebration of our centennial in 2016. We are very proud of what has been accomplished over the last 100 years, and we owe it to those who preceded us, as well as to those who succeed us, to make sure our second century improves on our first. To help us reach that goal, a second century commission was formed, co-chaired by two retired United States senators and made up of luminaries from academia, business, nonprofits, and other organizations who came together to learn about the National Park Service and to make recommendations about how we can best serve the public going forward. Those recommendations included to embrace the 21st century mission and create new national parks and collaborative models of national parks, foster ecosystem and cultural connectivity, increase life lifelong learning, enhance stewardship and citizen service by strengthening our protection of park resources and broaden civic engagement, ensure sustainable funding structures for our parks. One commissioner remarked, if we intend to protect our national parks into perpetuity, basic finance tells us we must fund them into perpetuity. Last September, America's Public Television Network aired a marvelous six-part series by filmmaker Ken Burns called The National Parks, America's Best Idea. The two things have come together with our impending centennial to create a buzz about the parks, fostering an energy and excitement unprecedented in recent years. Parks and partners are stepping forward with bold and creative ideas to transform the park experience and prepare for our new century. Can we use this centennial, the U.S. National Park Service, the guardians of the world's first national park, as a rallying point to foment an international movement to connect all people of the world to their parks? Can we take what was America's best idea in 1872, and it's now a great idea in Guatemala, Turkey, Jordan, Cambodia, Australia, and hundreds of other nations, and work together to share that idea with our citizens and invite them to join us on that continuum? Can we achieve an unprecedented level of collaboration and cooperation to acquire the scientific information that will allow us to craft the policies and make the decisions necessary to mitigate and to adapt to climate change? Can we lead by example, using these places entrusted to our cares as models of sustainability, as learning platforms to teach the benefits and necessity of natural and cultural resource conservation? Can we be the generation that makes parks matter to people, not just on vacation time, but every day? If we can do that, Ryan O'Neill will smile down on us, that famous twinkle in his eye, and know that his legacy is now ours. Thank you for your attention it's, and for about allowing us to be a part of the inaugural Healthy Parks, Healthy People. Thank you.